Should power shift in Benin from the Kiev to the Idoma? Today, it's going to be a debate. Today, I'm not just an anchor. I'm going to be on one side of this debate, and I'm going to have someone else who is supposed to be a Steve person. <laughs> when I'm saying supposed to, but he's Steve, but he is a strong proponent of a shift in power from the Kiev to the Idoma in Benue. But as a background for those who do not know Benue State, Benue is a state in north-central Nigeria that was created in 1976 from the then Benue Plateau State. Now, Benue is known as the food basket of the nation because the people are mainly agrarian. They produce a lot of agricultural stuff, or products, and they feed they can feed the nation. However, on the political plane, Benue has been ruled mainly by people from one ethnic group, the Tiv, and mostly it includes the governor, the speaker of the House of Assembly, and other key officers of governance in the democratic uh, dispensation. Now, there has been an agitation for an Idoma governor come 2023 and that agitation is gaining a lot of traction where you had um, a person a personality as big as um, the Wantere Paul Unongo who was a former minister and a thief man who advocates categorically for an Idoma governor come 2023 even recently, you had the former governor of Benue State, uh, Mr. Gabriel Suswan, who has spoken to editors, Idoma editors, who said they came to him for him to speak about the issue of an Idoma governor in 2023. His own position is that the Idoma must do a lot of hard work in terms of consultations with the people in Zone A and Zone B. And uh, senator Abamoro, the senator representing Zone C, who is also of Idoma extraction and a very strong grassroots mobilizer, has said the same thing, that he's pleading with the Tiv people to hand power to the Idoma come 2023. So with me in the studio is Mr. Paul Liam, the head of operations for ISU Media Limited. Paul is a writer. He's a public affairs analyst. He's a commentator on a lot of public affairs issues. His position, which has been canvassed on social media and elsewhere, and even before now, we've had a debate over it. His position is that power has to shift to the Idoma-speaking people of Benue. And my position is that, no, I don't care who rules Benue in 2023, so long as that person has the quality. So let's hear from Paul. I think, uh, Paul, you are welcome to the show. Thank you for having this, me. To, today's show, just like I said, is not a host against, it's a debate. Yeah. So you should. I'm open to it, and uh, thank you for having me mm. on uh, this very uh, important platform that uh, curates uh, conversation around uh, uh, the Benue people and uh, development across uh, uh, all parts of uh, the state, uh, as I am aware mm. that this is what the Acquire TV does. And I think uh, this is coming uh, at the right time. Mm. And, uh, uh, well, this debate is something that has, uh, for me, been uh, of a perpetual concern about how Benue has fared in the hands of uh, TIF people in terms of uh, uh, the political administration since the emergence of uh, the new democracy uh, that we are in today. And um, though a chief man, I have always uh, believed that uh, one tribe is not sufficient enough to cater for the needs of uh, everybody in terms of uh, political administration. And I believe, uh, uh, and it's a personal conviction that I hold very dearly, 
that it is time for uh, the Benue, for, for things to change in Benue, mm -hmm. not just uh, politically, uh, but also economically. Mm -hmm. And I am convinced that uh, an Idoma person should at least for once be given the opportunity to, to lead the state. Uh, this is because if the chief people of Benue State have been ruling the state since 1999 or even before that time to this level, we have seen at least the level of development that they've been able to, to, to bring to the state. But let us also see what other members of the state or what other families that belong to this Benue family, the values that they could bring on board. Mm. So if we don't try them, we would never know. So that. why is that not a movement for an IGD governor or an Etulu governor? Well, so well I, I am not uh, 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 out uh, uh, lining the fact or saying that the Igedes cannot contest. The Igedes should also be given a chance. Mm. But uh, in, in the traditional ratio, for example, growing up in my village in Babi, mm. in, uh, in Gwe East local government of Benue. You're from Minda, like... Uh, yes, I am, the like... current go uh, Governor Oto. But the interesting thing is that a massive man, even within the subdivision in the Tiv ethnic group, a uh, Mindaman, I mean, a, a massive man has never been go uh, become governor of uh, Benue State. Yeah, but massive is, is not all part of. Yes, uh, massive is part of Minda. Mm -hmm. But a massive man, the massive people are agitating. I am saying this as a political uh, 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 fact mm. that the massive people within the the Tiv ethnic block mm. uh, and within the division that they've caused within themselves, mm. uh, of course, power shifts yeah. amongst the Tiv block. Uh, but I am interested in what unites Benue State. At this stage, it should no longer be about the chief man heading Benue State. It should be about, like you often say, the best person should win. Yes, the best person should lead, but the best person can also come from Igede. The best person can also come from Edoma land. Why should a particular group monopolize the system? Because they have uh, uh, maybe the numbers. To, to be able to do this so. is where okay my position comes from. If you go to the Benue State Civil Service, the directors are mostly chiefs. So if you ethnicize even the leadership at the governor level, what you are saying is that you, you we can cede governorship of the state to say an Idoma person, yeah, right, and we will not address even some of the structural issues that will even make him perform or not perform. So if you put an Idoma governor, even if he is willing to make a difference, and he still has a group of people, let's say within the civil service, that do not want him to perform, either want to subvert him or for whatever reason, he would fail woefully, and it will be said that an Idoma governor came to power and did not do the right thing. My position why we should not move, we should not advocate for an Idoma governor in 2023 is that if you, even those who are waiting in the wings in Idoma right now to lead are the same people that have failed the Zone C in terms of doing justice. So if you say you give power to an Idoma person in 2023, mm. the Idoma have not shown themselves as capable of doing justice between the people in the zone C, um, the zone C senatorial zone, mm. where an Igede who comes from two local governments, the Obi local government and the Oju local government, they are Igede speaking. They have never been able to become uh, a, a, a senator. The, there are so many appointments that come and are monopolized by the others in the seven, other seven local governments. The Ufia people, the Akwea people, and different, and you know, in, in that same zone, see, we have the, the, the Igbo people. There are some other Igbo people in Benue. So for me, if we ethnicize it, we are going to have a situation where an Idoma comes to power, and due to these other factors, either because he does not have a good system, a good public system like the civil service, 
or because he is not even of a person, he comes from the current ruling elite that is very destructive and selfish. And we will just not get it. And then within one term, even half a term, he is impeached. And then they say, Idoma did not produce a good governor. So for me, an agitation for an Idoma governor. You see, the, the, your, your, the concern you've raised um, uh, with regards to chief people saturating the civil service sector mm. and the Benue state is part of the consequences of ethnic uh, uh, manipulation that I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Um, because the thieves, the thieves have monopolized and manipulated the entire system. They control the structure, mm. a dysfunctional structure at that, because at some point in time, there was no primary education in Benue state. Yeah. I mean, I have uh, relatives, cousins who, who teach or who were teaching, and who for years they were not paid salary. Yeah. And these people are chief people. Mm. And then they have their children or their words in private schools or in better funded uh, school who are acquiring education. But if we have an Idoma man mm. come on board, for example, I am seeing that he is coming from a very uh, 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 conscious uh, 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 point of view or position because he is a oh. deprived disadvantage. of disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And he would want to do anything that he could do or all that he could do to ensure that he galvanizes the process of instituting mm. a more formidable structure that is inclusive, that carries everybody along. For example, how did the chief uh, people put in all of those chief people into those places that they, have, they, that they occupy today? So we do an overhaul of the system. And if then they were accusing him of ethnic cleansing, because that's that's the kind of yeah. exact thing that if we do, if we use an ethnic mm. choice for 2023, that's my my exact fear, mm. because if he tries to adjust any of the imbalances, mm. then he will be accused of ethnic cleansing. But if a thief man mm. who comes in 2023 mm. with a mindset of justice mm. comes into power and says. I want to address these imbalances because what we are talking about the imbalances is management of diversity, which is a part of democracy. So if you are a good thief governor, you will address imbalances. If you are a good thief governor, the road to Boko will be as good as the road to Aledi and Otupo. But, but sir, the, the, the truth is the thieves have proven beyond that that they are incapable of this direction in terms of political the thief elites, mm -hmm. that is, sorry, that is, I should put it mm -hmm. much, uh, uh, more pointedly. The mm -hmm. chief elites, mm -hmm. political elites to be specific, have proven without doubt mm. that they cannot provide the kind of quality leadership that will propel Benue State. I mean, the thief people are among the, the fifth or sixth largest ethnic group in Nigeria, they say. Mm. What is our role in national politics in Nigeria? And we ha we, the, the, the Idoma have be been Senate president for how many years we've had Ameh Bute, we've had David Mack, mm. and we have not also seen the evidence. All the local government chairmen in, 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 in Zone C, in the Idoma speaking area, are they chiefs? They are Idoma. Have they shown that they can also perform? Therefore, we should give them the bigger platform now, of the state. But, but the question would then would be mm -hmm. that the chiefs who are always uh, uh, clamoring and ensuring that they occupy the governorship. Is it that their local governments have fared better? Their local governments have not fared better. So what I'm saying is mm. this. Knowing mm. what our challenges are, mm. that no part of the state is better for it. Yes. But because there is a system, let us look at the national system, for example, mm. where each political party that takes over power, as we have seen from power shifting from PDP to the APC, mm. we see that people are already say, even the, the APC stalwarts are saying power should shift to the south. Mm. But then you will see that Niger has the kind of diversity that we have in Benue State. We mm. have the Nupi, we have the uh, Kambari, we have the Kamuku, mm. we have the Gwari, Gwari, we have the Hausa. Or the Bagi, right? <laughs> or the Bagi, <laughs> uh, as they, they call. Some say they are Gwari, some say they are Bagi. So, but then we have this ethnic diversity in Niger State. But the Nupi have always been... Uh, the Nupi have not always been governors. That is the point. That is yeah. why what I believe that 
uh, why I'm also insisting that Benue State should take a cue from what is happening in Niger State. Now, the Niger State political system is structured in such a way that each zone produces a governor after one zone. Since 1999, that is how it's been running. Okay. Uh, engineer A. A. Kure yes. uh, was governor from 1999 to 2007. Yeah. Uh, uh, Telba, uh, chief, servant. Uh, chief servant of Niger State, then became governor from 2007 to 2015. Okay. He chief was servant is from Zombi. Okay. He's from Zombi. He's from Mina. Hmm. So he represented Zombi and became governor, right now. Uh, the, he left in 2015. The new governor, uh, uh, Sanibelu, is from Zonsi, mm. from Kontogora. Now, power is now going to shift to Zon A. The Nupes have like 100 persons already mm. coming out to. Nobody is going to debate this. Nobody is going to contest this with them mm. because it is time for the Zon uh, 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 A mm. in Niger to produce the governor. Mm. This is to show that we are together. This is to give a sense of belonging to all this ethnic, all of these ethnic groups. Why okay. can we not do the same thing in Benue State? Now, if the state is not progressing, we know that an Indoma man has been there, mm. an Igede man has been there, uh, a chief man has been there, mm. yet we are here. So at that stage or at that level, we will no longer be talking about it is your tribe or it is my tribe. It is all of us that have joined hand to create this problem. And we would come back to the table in terms okay. of trying to solve it. Okay, so as a final word, are you suggesting that we should wait for another like 20, 30, 40 years before we come back as Benue to sit down and realize this is a problem? Because from my own argument, I mean, we're about closing because there, there is no time. But so it looks like you're saying, let's try, let's try and air, even though the, the sieve have been airing. Sir, let's air some more. Sir, it is not looking like okay. what I'm proposing is. The thief has spoiled, from 1999, they've, they've spoiled the state. Hmm. Let the Idoma man also come and spoil his own. <laughs> after the Idoma man spoils his own, mm -hmm. the Igede man will come and spoil mm -hmm. his own. Mm -hmm. So after all the ethnic groups have spoiled the system, mm. who will now come together and say we have all performed our share? Mm. Because it appears we cannot work for progress. Yeah. So let all of us come and destroy. So after the destruction, we will now come and say, look at how we have failed. You mm. have tried, you have tried, you have tried. Mm -hmm. But there seems to be no progress. Mm. How do we change the system? Because it doesn't look to me that, like we, are any, ready, that we are ready, ready for, to, any for any change. But the, we must give each and every ethnic group in the state a sense of belonging. The mm. state people have played their part. They are big brothers. They have the numbers. They have the economic power. They, sh they should also understand that that value that they propagate amongs the ethnic group, mm -hmm. eat and give your brother your share. Brother. Mm -hmm. They should remember that in the Benue family, they have the Idoma, they have the Igede as their brother, and they should extend this hand of brotherhood to them. My, own, my own argument is slightly different. It's that the ethnic coloration of it doesn't solve this problem because it's the narrative of the elite. Who will take it and they will, just like you have rightly said, they will keep destroying it until we all realize that the ethnic formula is only working in favor of the elite. Right now, my own advocacy is for younger people, people who are fully marginalized in the Thieves and the Doma side and the Igede side, and so all the zones are suffering the same neglect and we should all come together and define the minimum standards of leadership and based on that, hold the future leaders accountable and even hold the past ones accountable. If you were the one who was to construct the health center and you chop the money, we'll hold you accountable. If you are the one in the future that should construct, we'll hold you accountable. So that's the end of our debate. And I hope people found it interesting because we've had this debate behind the scenes before. And then we thought uh, we should also share this conversation with everyone. Paul? Yeah, it's, it's a conversation that uh, would uh, continue and should continue. Yes. We need to really have this conversation. Perhaps this could lead to the turnaround that we hope for uh, in terms of uh, a better future for Benue State and uh, for humanity in general. Yeah.
thank you very much those who have been watching Aquia TV discussion at this time. Uh, it's been very interesting, the build-up to 2023. As Dr. Husseini Abdu, a political scientist, has said, politics is about managing diversity. As, as much as about the power of the majority, it's also about managing diversity. So the arguments here are which diversity are we managing? While Paul seems to be talking about the ethnic diversity that should be managed, I am saying that the majority of the oppressed people and the marginalized people should take over from the elite. We would like to hear your comments, uh, see your comments in the comments section of this debate. It's not a closed debate. We have just given you our perspective. We are ordinary people who also come from Benue and we've been watching the situation. Aquea TV talks about history, culture, art, and development. So if there's any of such issues, let us know and we're going to get to discuss it on the show. Stay tuned for other segments of the show. <laughs> James Akpala, the councillor representing Alan Ward in Akpa district of Otoko local government, escaped unharmed an armed robbery attack, but the hoodlums made away with his phones and other essential belongings. This attack happened on the 14th of August 2020 around Adankari Junction along Otobi Utonkan Road. Many Akwea have reacted to the unfortunate attack. Mr. James Okaja, a media man speaking on Akwea Unite for Peace group chat, said this shows that we have a lot to do about security in our community. It has become very porous, and there's a need to urgently put in place measures to stop further attack on our people. We must not leave it to the police. Let's have our local vigilante men man all the entry points into Akwea land, he added. Meanwhile, investigation is ongoing by the Nigerian police to fish out the suspected robbers. Benue State Governor Samuel Otom has raised concern over what he described as the marginalization of state in the distribution of project and appointive position in the federal government. Governor Otom made this known while he hosted the federal commissioner representing Benue State at the Federal Character Commission, Mr. Silas. 
Makipa in Makodi. He said Bedway State has been shortchanged for long in terms of appoint appointment and distribution of projects, but hope that as an experienced politician, the new federal commissioner will correct the anomaly. He said as a federating unit in Nigeria, Benue will continue to synergize with the federal government with a view to getting his fair share of appointment and distribution of other resources. While congratulating Mr. Mikafa on his appointment, the governor assured him of the support of the administration to enable him succeed. Earlier, the Federal Character Commissioner said the mandate of the commission includes ensuring fair and equitable distribution of position in public services, distribution of social economic amenities, and infrastructural facilities among the federating units. He stated that guidelines and formula for correcting all issues of marginalization have been drawn and we are awaiting parliamentary approval and presidential assent, stressing that the crisis of marginalization have been tackled to an appreciable level. Mr. Makifa commended Governor Tom for the maintenance of peace and security in the state, as well as the provision of infrastructure and good governance for Benue people. The former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Dr. Obadiah Melafia, has arrived at the Plateau State Headquarters of the Department of Security Service, DSS, in Jos. The former deputy governor of the Apex Bank was earlier invited, squeezed, and released last week, Wednesday, over some comment he made at a program alleging that a serving governor in one of the states in the north was a commander of Boko Haram. The fresh invitation came at the weekend, Friday, 14th of August, 2020, and he arrived in the vicinity of the DSS office at about 12, 12 p.m. in company of his wife, Margaret, lawyer, Yakubu Bawa, Reverend Gideon Paramalam, Barrister Naken Bagudu, among other supporters. He was ushered into the premises of the security agency by some personnel accompanied only by Bawa and Paramalam. Speaking with some journalists on arrival, he said, I am honored to have you here. I love you so much. I love our country. I've been invited again. I'm just about to appear before the invitation came in the weekend, so I had to honor it. I don't know the reason I'm being invited, but as a good citizen of this country, as a loyal, obedient citizen of this country, I have to honor authority and respond when I'm invited to help them in the course of their inquiry. Thanks for watching. Akwea TV News, Idajo Aja.